The first thing I did when I set up my launch PlayStation 5 console was to hop into Astro's Playroom. I had already heard tons of impressions of it from the various video game podcasts I listened to, and I couldn't wait to experience it for myself. What I found was a charming little platformer that showed off what the DualSense controller could do. In short, it felt magical to me. Four years later, Team Asobi returns with the first truly fleshed out game starring their little blue bot, and I can safely say that the magic is still there. If you did play that original pack-in title when you bought your PS5, you know exactly what to expect with Astrobot. Namely, impeccably precise controls, gorgeous visuals, and tons of personality. It's just that everything here is bigger, more polished, and brimming with new ideas that elevate it from glorified tech demo to Game of the Year contender. I don't say that lightly. Astrobot is easily one of the best games I've played this year, and that's in a year with such stellar releases as Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Unicorn Overlord, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I had a huge grin on my face during the 10 or so hours I spent completing the main game, and it remained as I went back to 100% it. So much of that grin came from the sheer amount of personality on display here. Astro as a character is expressive and far more emotive than I would have expected, and his animations are among the best I've seen in recent memory. From the way he keeps a lookout for his missing friends, to the exaggerated sneak walking he does, to his plethora of idle animations, Astro is a star in the making. This extends to the levels and enemies, and I was reminded, more than once, of my favorite parts of Insomniac's Ratchet and Clank series, as well as their early Spyro the Dragon games. Enemies react to aggro with aggression, consternation, and sometimes fear, depending on the situation. They chuckle when they defeat Astro, and since most of the environments also have an element of mechanical sentience to them, you'll see the same level of personality from the things you're interacting with on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Of course, all the personality in the world wouldn't mean a thing if Astrobot wasn't a joy to play, and boy howdy is it! Each level would sit right at home in some of Nintendo's best games, and every time I thought the game couldn't impress me more with its platforming and sense of scale, something would happen that would have me wowing out loud to myself. The power-ups Astro gets to play with are each a blast to use, and one level, downsize surprise, simply has to be played to be believed. The bosses are massive, and each one is the icing on the cake with their respective stages. After defeating the big bad in each galaxy, Astro will then navigate to a final stage, wherein he takes on the persona of a major first-party Sony game character. These levels are some of the biggest standouts in Astrobot, and I was amazed at how well Team Asobi was able to map the mechanics and general vibes of these five very different games onto their platforming framework. I won't go into further detail here on what you'll encounter, because I believe that the discovery is part of the fun. Just know that you're going to be pleasantly surprised at the end of each galaxy and enjoy the ride. Ride is probably the best word to describe the game, because unfortunately Astrobot is sorely lacking in the challenge department. I had the same feeling with Astro's Playroom, but as a free pack and title it was less of an issue. Here though, I was rarely tested and flew through the majority of the stages. A handful of challenge levels require some tight platforming and nearly perfect timing, but there were so few of those that they almost felt out of place compared to the rest of the game. I would have liked a smooth but steady escalation of the game's difficulty, but instead the final galaxy didn't tax me much more than the first galaxy did. It wasn't enough to dull my enjoyment of the game, but it did have me craving a little more bite. The other main part of the Astrobot equation, much as with Astro's Playroom, is the lavish amount of PlayStation nostalgia being served up here. While Playroom focused on PlayStation hardware, Astrobot puts a magnifying glass on the games and characters that made the PlayStation the brand it is today. Each level holds multiple lost bots, many of which are dressed as iconic characters from the PlayStation's past. I withhold examples because, again, the discovery is part of the fun, but these references go deep, and even someone like me, who has been around for every one of these console launches, got stumped more than once with some of the more obscure bots. There are, sadly, a couple major de developers missing from the lineup, and I'm talking about studios that go hand-in-hand -hand with any conversation that revolves around the first two generations of PlayStation systems. I'm sure it was a matter of negotiations falling through, but it's still a bummer to find that last bot and realize who isn't there. Beyond that, there's an unshakable feeling of ennui that comes with seeing these classic characters and franchises represented, only to then remember how many of them come from Long Dead series. Remember that part in Wreck-It Ralph where Qbert is begging because his game was unplugged? Yeah, it's a lot like that. Team Asobi clearly has a love and reverence for these games, but as I continue to find more and more bots, I realize how little Sony as a video game publisher seems to even acknowledge them. But those are the musings of an old gamer who was there for all of this. It doesn't take away from the fact that Astrobot is a delightful adventure that every PlayStation 5 owner should embark upon. It'll remind you, as Playroom did before it, of the potential of this beefy console, and is likely to stick in your memory as one of the best games of this generation. Do not miss out on this one.
I'm giving Astrobot a 10 out of 10. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I, as always, am a podcaster, not a video editor. So if you would like to hear more, please check out the State Select podcast. We are a video game variety show. And stay tuned for more reviews and other weird shenanigans. Thanks.